Welcome back to the program. Well, Israel says a UN resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire has damaged truce talks after Hamas rejected a proposal for a deal in Gaza. Let's bring in Joel Burney from the Israel and Jewish Affairs Council now. Joel, thanks for joining us. What do you make, firstly, of this UN resolution? It called for a ceasefire, yet didn't even condemn the October 7 attacks. Thank you very much for having me, Danica. Well, yes, as you've correctly stated, um, the, U the UN Security Council resolution, which was passed uh, with the unfortunate abstention of the United States, uh, doesn't uh, have a condemnation of Hamas in its original resolution, hence the reason why Israel was very upset with its passing. It also calls for an immediate ceasefire, um, but doesn't really suggest that um, there could be a potential a temporary truce that was already on the table. Now, if uh, Hamas is praising you publicly or praising a government for doing something, it might be an indication that you might have got this wrong. But in saying that, I wouldn't want to overestimate the impact that this has had on the Israel-United States relationship. So UN, uh, sorry, uh, National Security Council uh, spokesperson John Kirby for uh, the Biden administration has reiterated after this incident that there's no daylight between Israel and the United States. And I'll also note that the defence minister, the Israeli defence minister, Yoav Gallant, was in the United States at the time and remained there for very constructive meetings. So, uh, look, it's very disappointing that the resolution went through, but I think the viewers need to know that, importantly, there is an offer on the table for a ceasefire, and that is an Israeli offer, a very generous offer on the table to Hamas, and it's Hamas that's saying no to that ceasefire. Uh, this is interesting. I want, I want to talk about the US abstaining from that re resolution. And I know that you've mentioned uh, re relations between US and Israel, but surely that would have been very disappointing for Israel to have heard. Uh, what is the relationship like now between the two? So the initial response was, was that of disappointment. Uh, there were reports of a group of defence officials that were being dispatched on their way to the United States that were recalled. Um, but again, I want to emphasise that that team appears to be uh, reconstituting and will potentially be on its way to the United States in the next couple of days. And the reports in, coming out today indicate that that includes Minister of Strategic Affairs Ron Derma, as well as uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's National Security Advisor, Zahi Negbi. So, again, I, I don't want to be one that overestimates the impact of this abstention at, at the UN. I still believe that even though it was disappointing, uh, there's no daylight between the United States and Israel. Uh, Israel uh, has very, very support, uh, very large support from the United States Congress as well, which is an important cog in all of this. So I'm confident moving forward uh, that the relationship will continue uh, as strongly as it has from the start of the war. So Israel's now put an offer on the table. What's been the status of any negotiations? So there's two things to note. So the, technic the technical points of the offer are, are quite simple and what I would suggest are quite generous. So it's an offer of a six-week temporary pause in hostilities uh, where Israel will give up 800 uh, security uh, prisoners uh, that it has in return for about 40 hostages. Uh, so that's a six-week truce, 40 hostages in return for about 800 uh, security prisoners uh, that are being kept uh, inside Israel. So if you look at the discrepancy between the amount of hostages released and the amount of prisoners released out of Israeli jails, um, it, it's quite a, a generous offer. And I'll reiterate, it's an Israeli offer that Hamas has indeed rejected. Uh, so these calls on the streets of Melbourne and Sydney calling for ceasefire now, ceasefire now, and also backed up by our own government and other like-minded governments, it's important to note that it's Hamas themselves that are the ones that are not accepting the terms of the ceasefire. So Hamas wants things that it can't get. Hamas wants Israel out of Gaza. It wants a permanent ceasefire and the removal of all Israeli forces, uh, and that's just not going to happen. No, uh, absolutely, uh, clearly not. Joel Burney, we do have to leave it there. Really appreciate you joining us this evening. Thank you.